In this video, I'm gonna show you how I make chili salt using the leftover mash from some of my favorite sauces. And it's a pretty simple process, but it is absolutely delicious. Let's get started. This here is the leftover mash from my yummy hot sauce. And I've processed it quite well with the food mill. We've extracted most of the juices, the sauce from it, and it was absolutely delicious and sold out pretty quickly on my store. These here are baking trays. I was looking around for quite a while for ones that were stackable, because you'll see my drying system that I use. This will fit in just perfectly. Basically, you can see what happens. These all stack up on top of each other, and that means I can have multiple rows of the mash on there drying out nice and easily. I'm just using plain old parchment paper. You can use baking paper. All it's trying to do is stop it from falling through the holes. And uh, it helps if it's kind of non-stick, which this is. Wow, that smells good. Once you've laid it out onto the parchment, then you just need to move it across to the tray. But there we go, one is done. Now we're just gonna do the rest and I'll be right back with you. This is all done. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna dry this. We're gonna take this over to our drying machine. Now, this is a machine that you would have seen in a previous video where I made biltong, but I'll explain pretty much the concept of how it works. And in the future, I may be doing another another version of it just to show you how it's built. This here is my drying box or my biltong box. And essentially it's controlled with this up here. This is the Raspberry Pi that I'm using to control everything. This is just a display so I can see what's going on inside here, temperature, humidity, that sort of thing. There are two fans on top here that get switched on depending on when the Raspberry Pi decides based on the humidity levels inside and also outside because I am measuring temperature and humidity inside the device and outside the device. It just helps me to create a, a perfect environment for the drying process. Inside the box is just, uh, there's just a bunch of these sort of things. So if I do want to hang things to dry, I can do that. So there's two rails, one at the top and one at the middle over here. I've also got a rail down the bottom there that I've created for the trays that I'm gonna be putting in here. At the very bottom, underneath that tin foil, there are two heat sources. I'm using two 100 watt incandescent light bulbs and that's basically going to be drawing air through some vents that are down the bottom. It's going to be removing the humidity from that air and that air is going to rise and come out through the top. When there is too much humidity and it's not removing the moisture quick enough from here, then the fans at the top kick in. Anyway, that's it. It's pretty basic. I will go into more detail about this if people are interested when I make another one. Uh, so let me know in the comments below if you want to see how this is built. But this is very versatile and as you can see it has a lot of room to dry a lot of stuff. If you don't want to build your own dehydrator then of course you can go and buy a cheapy one like this and this is a cheapy one that I have. It does the job, it's fantastic. Just make sure that if you get one, make sure that it can go down to about 40 degrees Celsius. I think it's around about 100 Fahrenheit. And uh, that's because if you do want to save seeds in the future from your fresh peppers, then you can use this for that purpose as well. So make sure you get one that can go to a lower temperature. Anyway, I'll, I'm gonna show you what to do if you are gonna use one of these. Firstly, take the inner bit out. And I'll link to the one that I use, the dehydrator that I bought. Cut a piece of parchment, same as we did before, just to be the rough size of that. And then we're gonna just cut around it so we have a, a rough circle. And then make sure, you can see there's a hole in the middle. Make sure you leave a gap for the hole. To do that, just, just fold it in half. And then in half again, and just snip the corner. And that'll leave a nice little hole in the middle. So we're gonna put it back inside the tray here. There we go. Put that there, and then we just layer on our mash, nice and easy. There we go, I'm gonna go and stack that on top of the dehydrator, and I will see you in a few days time. Again, this will probably take about five days, but essentially you just want this to be 
dry, 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 so it crumbles when you touch it. It's been five days. It's time for us now to check on the chili mash and see how we did with the drying. So it smells good. We can see that, that is just crumbling up, which is just what you want. There you go. Typically, this is what I'd use to process my spices. And it works fantastically if I'm doing batches for myself and my family, then this thing is just great. The problem is I have a lot of processing to do here. This thing would take forever. I would have to keep refilling it over and over and I'd probably burn out the motor. This is basically exactly the same thing as this, just on a larger scale. The chili mash is all blended up and ready for us to start mixing. This machine did a fantastic job. It took about 10 seconds per load and we had perfect consistency every time. It really is a time saver for myself when you're doing these larger batches. I ended up having to use a dusk mask or this air filter thing because my goodness, uh, breathing in the powder, even though this isn't a really super hot source that this came from, breathing that in it's still no fun so i would wear a mask something like this or some sort of dust mask i'm sure you guys would probably have one at home let's get to mixing our spice and we're going to fill up some of these jars this is of course a chili salt which means salt is the core ingredient and if you're going to be doing this for yourself you need to experiment with what works for you and for your particular chili powder for me, the ratio I'm going with is nine parts salt to one part chili mash or chili powder. So let's get the salt in there. We're using a good quality Himalayan rock salt. Nice and pink, love the color. That is 900 grams. I'm gonna zero this out again. And then we add 100 grams of the chili mash. And there we go, the first bottle is done. So it's time to give us a try. Chili salt can be used in so many different things. I'm having some on my egg here. Uh, be careful not to add too much. But there we go. And uh, let's see what this tastes like. That's great, uh, really tasty. So you can use this on pretty much anything that you need salt with. That's pretty much most things. Another thing this is really good for is to really spice up some of your chips or fries. Uh, use this instead of salt when you're doing that on your, on your fries and it'll take it to another level. There you go, yet another use for your leftover mash. I've showed you a couple ways that you can use it now whether you're making a dry spice or you're putting it in the freezer inside ice trays and using it as a spicy stock cube. There's so much goodness and flavor and, and spice still inside that mash. So it'd be a real shame to let it go to waste. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that uh, you go check out my shop. This is for sale now and uh, I'm very keen to see what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below if you do get yourself one. I wanna hear your, your thoughts on this. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next video, Stay safe and stay spicy.